Okay, tell me when we're on. Okay, we want to welcome everybody tonight. Those, thank you. Watching on uh, Facebook and YouTube, as well as our website, as well as those that are here. And this is our week. The Lord really has directed us to have a, a night of worship every night this week. So really praying in. Last night we prayed in a personal awakening, personal renewal. And tonight we're going to be praying for corporate renewal, corporate awakening, praying for the body of Christ, praying that the Spirit of God would fall in this place, fall in our community, fall in our nation. That's what our, our focus will be tonight. We're probably going to go around to 8, 15, 830. And then tomorrow night we're going to go start at 630, not 7, 630. And uh, we'll, we'll go again. And then we'll go again Friday just begin to cry out to the Lord for this. So join with me in prayer. Father, we thank you for this time. Uh, we set it aside as a time to worship and intercede. And Lord, we, we ask that you give us direction tonight for, uh, Lord, corporate intercession, corporate renewal, corporate awakening, a revival in the body of Christ. That Lord, we'd rise up in this hour uh, to become what you made us to be. Thank you for those that are here and those that are watching. And Lord, anybody that's joining with us, we just ask for an, a, cor a corporate exponential anointing as we all come together for this purpose. Be with the worship team, Lord. Let them take us into that place of the Spirit where, Lord, we can hear better and we can declare better uh, because of the Spirit. Lord, calm our hearts down, calm our day down, and uh, that we've gone through work and just stuff today. And I just pray a peace come over us and peace come in this room tonight as we intercede for the body of Christ. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship.
eyes everywhere they've looked anywhere apart from you so we declare tonight that our eyes are fixed upon you the eyes of this house all those here that our eyes will be fixed upon you forgive us father in our hearts where they've been far and separated from you tonight we declare that our hearts are returning back to you in jesus name So we fix our eyes on you. 
So right now the Lord is looking. He's, he's looking, I see him looking to and fro. He's looking for someone that will answer the call. He's, he's searching and he's looking. So Lord, we just come to you right now, Father. And we say, here we are, Lord God. Here am I, Lord God. Use me, Lord. Use us, Father. Bring us together, Lord God, that you can use us, Father. I just want to agree with that and let's the ones let's be the ones that surrender to that call you know the Lord just needs somebody to say hear my Lord send me as Isaiah quoted and so let's make a commitment that we're gonna be catalysts for renewal for for an awakening that we're gonna be a catalyst in the body of Christ that we're not gonna just wait for somebody else we're gonna burn ourselves and so Lord I pray right now for each one here that's connected to this meeting that Lord we say we want to answer this call you're looking to and fro and we say here are we Lord send us Lord use us in a special way I think there's a commitment in your heart that you need to make and I, I just um, I heard that scripture and it's in Ezekiel 36 but it's also in Ezekiel 11 but it says, when we remove these things, these detestable things and these abominations, it says the Lord will give them one heart and put a new spirit within them. And he will take the heart of stone out of their flesh and give them a heart of flesh. And they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them. Then they will be my people and I shall be their God. And so that's our cry right now, that Lord, that the body of Christ should remove the detestable things, remove the abominations that are causing uh, us to be withheld from our purpose. And Lord, we want to agree with this scripture here that Lord, you're going to give us one heart. We pray for one heart in the body uh, for your purposes. And Lord, I just pray in, in agreement that you put a new spirit within us, Lord. I know this is prophesying to Israel, but we take this word and we say, do it here, Lord. Do it now. Begin to release your spirit that would cause people to do what you call them to do. And then also, though, I was getting this out of Habakkuk. And you know, Habakkuk needed a, Habakkuk, however you say it. <laughs> they needed a revival bad. It had been 600 years. They just needed an outpouring. And this prophet just made a prayer and he cried out to God for an outpouring. And I just want to agree with what he did. And this is out of a different translation. It's out of the message. But I think it, it declares it better in, in verses 2 and 3. And he's, here's his prayer. He said, God, I have heard what our ancestors say about you. And I'm stopped in my tracks down on my knees. Do among us what you did among them. Work among us as you worked among them. And as you bring judgment, as you surely must, remember mercy. And so he kept hearing the stories of outpourings on the people of Israel. And you know, and everybody carried the story, but they weren't walking in the story. It was history. It was the past. And so we need that now. We need their spirit here now. And so we call forth our ancestors who carried an anointing. Now we don't, no, we're not talking to the dead. The, the anointing that was on them. Lord, we call it to the present time, but it exponentially greater even now. We ask for your spirit to be here. And we call forth for an outpouring, a revival of spirit to fall upon us. Lord, we remember what happened, but Lord, we say, do it now. And Lord, in your judgment, remember mercy. Lord, let mercy triumph in this season that Lord, this awakening happens in our nation. And as awakening happens in the earth, Lord, we ask you to remember the mercy of your son's death and on the cross. And we call forth it right now. In Jesus' name. Lord, make us, give us a new spirit to hunger for an outpouring among your people, Lord.
Father, as we remember your word, Lord, as we remember, Lord, even the stories that the generations prior to us shared with us, Lord, as, as we have read your word and we remember, we remember the stories of what Jesus, of what you did on this earth, we remember, we declare that we will not only be listeners in this house or in this region, but we will remember your stories and we will tell your stories. We will repeat the truth. We will repeat the goodness that we've heard about, that we were told about. And we will share and we will testify of the power that was demonstrated in generations past and present. In Jesus' name.
You know, when Israel needed a breakthrough in Jehoshaphat's time, because the enemy had surrounded them, they just began to seek the Lord and they cried out, you know, Jehoshaphat's prayer. But the prophetic came to give direction on the breakthrough. And I just really, I want to pray in the prophetic would actually have the directives on how to, for us to get breakthrough in the corporate body, that we can see the way of the Lord. You know, what I love about the prophetic encounter uh, to Hazel was the prophet. And he came in and he said, do not fear or be dismayed because of this great multitude for the battle is not yours, but God's. And I just, well, let's just make that agreement that the battle to get to our breakthrough is not ours, it's the Lord's. And we just surrender ourselves, and we say, Lord, we can't fight this battle against the spirit of darkness is keeping back an awakening and a move and a renewal and a revival in our midst. But Lord, we say that you're greater than our enemy, just like the prophet prophesied. And he said, you need not fight in this battle. Station yourself, stand and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow, go and face them, for the Lord is with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head and his face to the ground, and Judah and his inhabitants of Jerusalem fell down before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites and the sons of the Kohathites, of the sons of the Korites, stood up to praise God, praise the Lord God of Israel with a very loud voice. So I want us to get loud here in just a minute. But I feel like we're supposed to do a celebration song, so hope you have one. <laughs> I may pull Stefania up here in a minute. She's, she can rejoice too. But here's what I want to say. It went on to say, Jehoshaphat said to the people, he gathered the people because the prophetic was there giving directives on how we're going to make it through. And he said this, he said, O oh, Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, put your trust in the Lord your God and you will be established. Put your trust in his prophets and succeed. See, that's why we need the prophetic word. And the prophetic word for them was to worship. And that's what the Lord told us to do this week. He said to worship every night this week. We had a dream. And that's what we're doing. And so we're obeying the Lord just like they did in days of old. It said, when he consulted with the people, he pointed those who sang to the Lord and those who praised him in the holy attire. And he went before the army and he said, give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness is everlasting. And it said, when they began singing and praising, the Lord set ambushes against the sons of Ammon, Moab, Mount Seir, who had come against Judah so that they were routed. I want the Lord to set ambushes against our enemy. Everything that's holding us back, even the enemies of our soul, whatever it takes to remove it. And so as we're acting out on this prophetic word and crying out and building a tabernacle, a house of prayer for all nations, but, but especially for our nation, for the body, I want to agree with them and with, with what it says here you know, that we loudly rejoice and we shout before the Lord. Can you imagine what it was like at that moment? Because they saw the enemy all around and the prophet comes and says, we're going to win. And they knew they needed to release something because see, if they didn't, they were going to die. And maybe that's part of our problem. We're, we're willing to live without revival, without an outpouring. And so there's not a cry in us because we're not hungry enough for it. And last night we prayed for a hunger and a thirst and the Lord answered us and he says, I promise you I'll feel you if you're hungry and you're thirsty. And so we're calling to the deep things within all of us. The deep calls to the deep. In other words, the deep things of God calls to the deep things of you and I which is for an outpouring, for His Spirit to reign on all the earth. And so it's hard to cry out if you want to live rather than die. Hmm. 
So, Lord, let us have a heart tonight. Help us. Lord, just strengthen us that we would be like they were, that we realize that if we don't have a move of God, the enemy's going to have victory over us. And let us have that cry that you are our only hope. We put our trust in you, Lord, and we put our trust in the prophetic. For your word is telling us if we'll do this, you'll pour out upon us more than we can handle. And so, Lord, with a cry of our heart now, we cry out to you, God, and we say, Lord, come. We say your loving kindness endures forever, just like they prayed right there. They said, Lord, your loving kindness is everlasting. And we begin to praise you right now. Let's pick up the tempo. And we begin to praise you, Lord, and we sing with you, and we praise you right now. And we agree with this prophetic word that, Lord, you're going to set ambushes against our enemy. Lord, against the enemies that are in this nation that wouldn't withhold an awakening. And we say, yes, Lord, if nobody else will cry out, we will cry out, Lord. Send your fire, Lord. Send the anointing. Send a revival to this land. Send a revival to each one of us too, Lord. Thank you, Father. Death couldn't hold you down 
Let's agree with that. There's a power when we all sing it together. A corporate anointing. That there's so I've heard it many times of people saying that God is through with America, that we're too far, he can't pour out his spirit, so he's moved on to another land. And I just want to repent for those false words, with those negative words, those words of unbelief, because they're words, those are words of sin, because unbelief is a sin. And we have tons of prophetic that says God's gonna pour out upon this land. You know, there's a covenant promise the Lord gave Israel, even the Jews in the New Testament. In Romans 11, you know, many of the people in Rome and, and the church at that time were saying that the church had replaced Israel and Israel no longer had a covenant and God had forgotten them and he was through with them and now it was all about the Gentiles. And Paul brought correction to that and he said, I say to them, God has not rejected his people, has he? He says, may it never be. And then he describes himself as one of those Jews. He said, I'm, I'm an Israelite. I'm a descendant of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. And he says, God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. And, I, and that's just a principle of the Lord concerning covenant. And I want to say this. Every promise that he gives you, every prophecy that is released is covenant. It's his portion when you, when, you know, when we sign an agreement with somebody in a covenant or in a contract, whatever, we, one person signs it, but it's not a covenant until the other person signs it. And so we need to sign on tonight and say that, God, you've not forgotten America. You've not forgotten Shreveport, Bossier. Are y'all with me, please? <laughs> you know, i am be honest with you. I was in a pastor's meeting once. And we were releasing the prophetic. It's a large pastor's meeting with all the big dogs there. And they asked us each time we came to release the prophetic. And then one of the last times we were invited, they said, we're just tired of hearing what God's going to do. We don't want to hear it anymore. We just want to do what we know to do, do church. That's what they said. And they kicked us out, basically. They didn't kick us out. They just never gave us another platform. And it was a group of us that were releasing prophetic. And, and I, I'm not here to point out sin. We all have it. But I'm here to say I disagree with that word. And I, I, Lord, I repent for my pastor friends. The Lord are just discouraged. They're not, they, it's not that they don't believe in the word of God. They're just discouraged. And so we pray for the pastors and the, the body of Christ here that are just discouraged. 
And the Lord, they, they, they want to see an outpouring, but they haven't seen it, so they've given up. It's easier to be in unbelief than to be in belief. And Lord, I just repent on their behalf. I stand in the gap as a pastor, as a leader, as a set person in a congregation locally. And I say, I disagree with that in the spirit. And I bless my brothers and sisters who are struggling. And I pray that you send fire to their houses. Holy Ghost fire, that your spirit would begin to invade them again. Lord, put hope where there's hope has been removed. And Lord, I say to the spirit realm, I say to everything that has tried to close the heavens over this region, the Lord rebukes you, number one. But two, the word of the Lord is stronger than any negative word. And every promise over this region Every promise of the voice of healing coming back. And Lord, your, your, your voice being released in this place again is yes and it is amen. I think we should sing something about yes and amen. And we'll let that be our last song tonight. Because I want to I say yes and amen to everything that God is saying here tonight. And every prophetic word over us. Karen, if you got anything, please say I want you all to add on. And so Lord... I recall all the words that are over this place and over this area. And I say to the wind of the Spirit, move again. Move again. We ask for a movement in the Spirit, a swirling of the Spirit, a whirlwind of the Lord to come and cleanse the air. You know, tornadoes clean the air out. They change the entire atmosphere. We need a whirlwind, a tornado of God to come. And it would just begin to do that. So I prophesy a whirlwind's coming to this area. And the whirlwind will come and be the whirlwind of God. It will bring the holiness and the purity of the Lord into our area. And, Lord, that it will stir up again the words that have been dormant, Lord. And I say, Lord, that as we started and, and many years ago, Lord, that, that this would be a Luke 4, 18 city that the Spirit of the Lord would be upon us and it would anoint us to preach the good news, to set the captives free, to bring sight to the blind and hearing to the deaf, both spiritually and naturally. I pray for an activation of these words. And Lord, I thank you for a new strength that's going to hit us right now. Lord, in hope. Y'all in agreement? Yeah. Okay, thanks, Jeff. Okay, you prophesied that Monday night. That's right. That's right. I do remember that. Okay, anybody else get any other prophetic before we sing our last song? All right. Okay. Okay, so here's what we're doing. We're going to come back here tomorrow night at 630. And we're going to do this again. And we're going to hammer it. What you got? So I guess it was maybe about two or three minutes before you mentioned the wording voice of healing. I felt like, you know, years ago when we started having that here, a lot of these wells that we uncapped, we located a lot, and we know what's going on, but the Lord's really going to help us penetrate. And us coming here every night, it's like I've learned kind of recently in sales, not to let any grass grow under our feet. So us coming here every day, the Lord's really on it. Good. I like that. And Sean Bowles gave us a word years ago, and, you know, Brother Branham and the Voice of Healing was here in the 1940s and 50s. And he gave us a word, and he said what they started never got completed and it's for this generation to complete what was started and so we put our hand to the ground we put that bit in the ground and we say lord dig deeper we pull out all the dirt the philistine spirit has put in there and we say we want to clean out our wells and we want the wells to be open again that this city would be known for a city of healing I don't know in my ministry I've ever had more people I know sick or struggling with disease in their body like right now. And you know, as sad as that is, it's an opportunity for the Lord. I was in the grocery store today and a guy just come weeping to me. He knew me from the past and his wife had stage four cancer. And she was standing right there and you know, he said, she, she wouldn't want me to tell you this, but she's got stage four cancer. And I was, I was over there in the grape juice area. <laughs> And, and, uh, and I, I, she was kind of embarrassed, so I didn't want to force myself. And I, the more I looked at the grape juice, the Lord said, I died for that cancer. And so she was over in the dairy section by then. So I went over there, 
And I said, is it all right if I pray for you? And she said, please do. So we just started praying in Brookshire's, you know, and just, I didn't care who was there. You know, when cancer's there, we don't care what people think. And so we just began, and I got words of the Lord. I saw the Lord start going into her belly and start moving around and changing her DNA. And so I just said, I'm going to believe for healing there. And see, that's what our city is supposed to do. Everywhere we go, we're supposed to be praying for that. We're supposed to be seeing that in the marketplace everywhere we go. Yeah. It's funny because their last name was King. It just hit me. And I think that's a picture that the King of glory is coming to our city. And we can believe for that. All right. You got anything, Kim? You should. Do you got anything, Lindy? I need help up here. And y'all are just letting me do it all. All right. Well, let's, let's, uh, Phyllis got something good. Stefania, you got a song yet? It is written. It is written. It's already written. It's in the book. It is written. It's a done deal. It is written. <laughs> I like that. I love her words. They always end. And it's like, uh, it's like, don't think anymore. Just take the word. All right? Stefania, do you have anything really? Do you have anything? I'm looking at you. She's worried about her baby. We'll take care of your baby. You may never get him back, but we'll take care of him. All right? This is the biggest child in America. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't have a word, but I have a testimony of something that happened last Sunday. We were to, at the house church, uh, I think Winsboro was, anyway, Westboro area. Um, by the way, he, he is not here, he's at the hospital to see John. And uh, anyway, we were this group that just left a uh, denomination that don't believe that God can heal today. So uh, the, the, their pastor uh, is hungry for the, you know, the giftings and uh, healing and um, um, anyway he gave uh, preached I think it was uh, um, forgiveness but then he start, uh, started teaching about healing and uh, he called all people that needed healing and uh, um, how much time do I have? <laughs> okay so a long conversion okay anyway some people got you know some pain left and was cool like some like growth and uh, uh, anyway, at the end of the meeting, uh, I start talking with these two girls. One of these two girls reminded me of a piano player that I know. And I, I said, maybe God is calling her to play the piano. And I asked her, do you play the piano? She's like, uh, no, I don't. Anyway, and I was like, that, that's weird, you know. I, I'm learning, so okay. So maybe that was wrong. After, uh, her friend t tells me, no, no, actually, she used to play the piano when she was younger. Anyway, I start connecting with them. Oh, you know, I want to learn. I'm still taking blah, 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 lessons. And anyway, the piano, future piano player tells me she was uh, afraid to come up for healing, but she's got a problem to her um, uh, shoulder. She doesn't have a, sh she has a shorter sh uh, shoulder blade or something like that. Uh, so he was still kind of ministering to some men, so I asked her, so what's your name? And one of the girls' name was Grace. The other girl's name was Grace. I said, okay, we got double Grace. I'm sure God wants to do something. So I said, he, he got two Grace, he double Grace. One Grace needs healing. Anyway, I just saw God, Jesus in the room, wanted to do that. There was like faith in the room. And this girl, before we prayed, she said, I could, I, I never was able to lift my uh, arm higher than here. After, I think the second time we prayed, she did like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And I said, this is for worship, you know, both. <laughs> and the second thing she said was like, I can't wait to tell my parents. Her, her parents didn't want her to be in that meeting. And it was like a little, you know, seed of what God I believe wants to do. I really, I'm hungry for this, and I, I believe we all are. So, I don't know. I I just say yes and amen to what you were saying, and I hope it can encourage you. And uh, today he heard from her. Uh, this pastor was there, and he said she's still 
she's still well. And her parents say, oh, cool. So, but I believe they're shocked because she was the first time, she was like 17, for the first time she left her arms. So that's so good. He says hello, he's not here. He's you know, some people will only believe a sign. So her parents, we call parents, or anybody who doesn't believe God heals today. We ask for a breaking. We pray that they have to see healing right before their very eyes. May they, even those who don't believe that Jesus saves, that they'll watch salvation before their very eyes as a testimony. They would make open display of the enemy, of what he has stolen, the truths of the Holy Spirit in the world. I remember once uh, Bobby Connor told this story. He was in Salt Lake City <clears throat> preaching, and uh, uh, the, one of the head elders of the uh, um, Mormon church, his daughter came to the meetings of Bobby's meetings, and she got born again. And uh, so all the elders of the Mormon church in Salt Lake City, the biggest church there, the Mormon Tabernacle, got angry because, the, you know, this happened. And so they all came to Bobby's meeting and sat on the front row, I think. There was like 12 elders from the Tabernacle that were there. And they were there because they were mad. And Bobby looked at them all. This is Salt Lake City. And he looked at them and all. He said, God's going to send a natural sign to you that what happened to that girl is true. He said, there'll be a disaster. You mark my word. It'll be a sign to you that she was born again by the power of Jesus Christ. Well, that night, well, he goes to his hotel, and he's, he's going to spend the night, and the Lord says, get out of town now. So he runs to the airport, and he leaves Salt Lake City. And that night, down the main street of Salt Lake City, a tornado went straight down Main Street in Salt Lake City, and they don't ever have tornadoes, period. And it was a sign to the Mormons that salvation has come through Jesus Christ alone and no other man. And so if God can mess with those type of religious spirits, imagine what he can do in Shreveport. Because <laughs> I, I think the only person, the only place that could compete with Salt Lake is Shreveport. So we have the power here now through Jesus Christ to do. Let's stand up. You have a song? Oh, good. <laughs> I told her 8.15, 8.30, so I want to keep my word. And uh, I don't want to wear Lindy out this week. I don't really don't want to work Joseph out. That's who I don't want to wear out. But uh, he's having to take care of the baby. But him and him and Brian, her and Brian back there are starting to get to know each other. So <clears throat> I do covenant marriages. But um, so, so maybe God's making some covenant here tonight. <clears throat> Ooh, Jesus, thank you, Father. We say yes and amen. Yes and amen to every promise. And Lord, we agree with this. Tomorrow night, 6.30. Let's pray for John right now. We pray for John in the hospital. We thank you, Father. You're going to heal him totally. Lord, the breakthrough he's had, we agree with that. For Burton, it's in ICU at Highland. We pray for his complete breakthrough. We ask for every organ in his body to come back to life right now. We say that his spirit man will come back to you as well. We decree that here tonight. We thank you for supernatural healing is being released from this house. And we say yes and amen. Yeah, and also Susan's brother-in-law is having heart surgery tomorrow. So, Lord, we just pray for his name's Warren, if you'll pray for him. Lord, that everything will go well. And Father, the physicians will accomplish everything that they put their hands to tomorrow. Lord, that his heart would be restored to you. In Jesus' name. All right, let's say yes and amen right now.
Everybody say amen. amen. Everybody say yes. yes. And we declare every promise over us and over you and over our city, over our nation is yes and it is amen. And there's a power in that declaration. Uh, sometimes we get so used to saying amen, but, but it's so be it. There's a spirit realm just does that. Remember when Jesse went to heaven, he said every time somebody says glory to God, everybody else says glory to God. The same thing. When we say amen, all of heaven says amen. And there's an agreement. So we walk out of here tonight. And I just release prophetic dreams and encounters on you tonight. And even in the days ahead, prophetic words, scripture that will come alive to you. That you'll begin to understand greater mysteries of the kingdom of God in this hour. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Now say amen. Look at your partner and say, the person next to you, every promise over you is yes. And then say to the, tell them, now say amen. All right? All right, now, so tomorrow night, 6.30. Also, uh, Al Marshall is going to Wade Correctional next weekend, right? And so he needs cookies for the prisoners, and so we want to do that. They need 50 dozen as a team. We got nine so far. That's not good. Just mark me down for two dozen, all right? So uh, if you'd like to bake cookies for those prisoners as they go and minister to them, talk to Al Marshall. He's... And the list is out there, but you can, he'll give you all the important things that you need to know. 